Good evening, friends. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, just one past uh, uh, four o'clock in the evening in UK. <clears throat> I'll just wait for people to join in while I'm sipping my uh, tea. I can see Suchitra has joined, Ankit, Sandeep, Ashitosh, Kumar <coughs> have joined. So uh, we hope we have a nice session. And uh, for some, uh, this might be just a revision. Uh, for others, uh, they might be listening about this session for the first time. You can see Shamik has joined. Uh, Mia Mohammed has joined, Viral Parikh, uh, Raj, Harjinder Kohli has also joined in. So, I think the first thing uh, we are, are you able to see the screen? I'll go into terminology and some basics. And this uh, terminology is important. Sometimes people get confused uh, with terminology. Uh, people say, oh, the probe is placed uh, transversely, <clears throat> or it's, it's parasitically placed, or it's a coronal or paracoronal plate. So if you look at transverse section, these are axial uh, or uh, axial uh, plane, uh, like we get axial um, you know, sections in a, in a CT scan. Uh, so with this uh, transverse, basically, probe is put across the body. So yeah, basically, it is dividing the body uh, top to bottom. That's what is a transverse or axial plane is. Uh, frontal plane is as if you're looking at the front, so it divides the body into front and back. Whereas median and sagittal is basically as if the body has been cut into two parts, and so one becomes the right section, another becomes the left section. So in most cases, I think um, when people are describing the how they place the probe, that's what they're talking about. Is it transversely placed or is it sagittally placed or axially placed? Okay, so when, when you do it, you can either ask them to clarify that or if you understand the terminology, this is what it is about. So coming to the basics of ultrasound, uh, two important aspects. Uh, first uh, thing is that it's ability to identify the structures. This is what is done in most courses. So whether you're attending a hi-fi course by uh, the uh, American Society of Regional Anesthesia, European Society of, or, or any, any, any society, uh, what you actually end up is basically doing that. You are actually uh, going to attend a workshop where people will actually show you how to identify the structures. The second bit, this is the most difficult bit, and this is what I will likely go and stress into, and I will like to show it in a schematic diagrams, how you can actually improve your hand-eye coordination. This is the ability to follow needle tip. Now, this takes quite a time. Uh, it is said that youngsters actually have a better hand-eye coordination because they're used to actually playing uh, video games or games on the mobile phone, so their hand-eye coordination is actually pretty good. And that's what I actually observe with uh, uh, my trainees. So hand-eye coordination uh, for uh, people like us has taken longer uh, because we weren't in the generation where uh, the mobile phones or smartphones were easily available. Uh, or we we're playing video games. Uh, uh, we were actually being instructed by our parents to just read, read, read. Uh, we were not allowed to play video games. So next thing is ergonomics and, and, and safety, of course. I mean, all of us understand how when the blocks are done, we go through the whole history. We look at there's no coagulation disorders. We assume the patient is actually in a safe environment. Uh, we do have IV, IV cannuline. We have fluids running. And we have the minimum monitoring on. So blood pressure, cough, ECG, pulse oximeter. This is, this is very basic. But... Now, within the theater, how you actually arrange yourself, the machine and the patient, uh, that's very, very important. And this is also a very important part of 
hand-eye coordination because you cannot be looking at your probe and then at the monitor look at the probe and at the monitor everything has to be within the field of vision and then you'll be happy also make sure that the uh, table is actually at the appropriate uh, sort of height uh, so that you're not bending over and stressing yourself keep yourself very comfortable if you want to sit and do the blocks you can actually do that as well but most of us obviously stand up and do them so raise the table up to your comfortable level have the monitor at your eye level as well uh, and uh, change the screen so that i mean you tilt the screen so that it is uh, visibility is very good do it all before you start doing the block i mean you can actually do a scout scan look at how comfortable you are looking at everything and uh, then then put on your gloves and 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 do the rest of the things never have the monitor on your side not necessarily i'm, I'm not this is actually not true in certain cases you can actually have monitor on your side but avoid that where you are actually turning your head uh, you know again and again and that's especially if you're doing a difficult block which takes time uh, it is going to be stressful so avoid avoid this situation and you know, i don't know about you or others but know your machine i mean we have different machines in our theaters we have though i have actually specifically marked the one in the center for no blocks that's what i want people to use the other two machines are actually simple machine you can use them for superficial blocks but if you're using for deeper blocks then better use a good good machine and know it uh, sit down with the uh, you know the reps and um, go through the manuals uh, to know the machine they're not very difficult there are a lot of uh, things on the machines but they have been simplified and but there are also complex machines like we have a philip one which has got hundreds of knobs but in the end you just need to know a few basic things <clears throat> so first thing which probe are you going to use for the blocks okay for most blocks can be done with a linear probe uh, but for some very deep blocks like if you are planning to do a uh, you know uh, <clears throat> for example lumbar plexus block or even sector plexus block um or blocks in, in morbidly obese, you might actually need a, a curve linear probe. So the linear probe are high frequency probes, and as the frequency increases, the resolution is fantastic. You get a very beautiful pictures, and that's what you have seen in my videos, because I tend to actually use uh, the high frequency probe for most. But what you're limited uh, with is by the depth. So a linear probe will actually go in for a depth of six centimeters. So uh, uh, the probe on the left side, so on the top you see a curve linear probe and the bottom is a, a, a linear probe or a high frequency probe. Whereas uh, with the curve linear probes, uh, the resolution is not very good. And it's a lower frequency and you can actually go deeper. So this is what happens. So when you're looking at, uh, at 10 to 14 megahertz, uh, your depth is limited. You get very good resolution, but uh, with say 2.5 megahertz or 1 megahertz, you can actually look at uh, very uh, deep. Uh, the resolution may, may not be fantastic, but you can actually try to identify the structures. So uh, the what kind of probe you use depends on what is your target, how deep is your target. And in most cases, you can actually make out. I mean, obviously, you have a patient who is a uh, lean um, patient you know that most uh, things will be seen with a linear probe you get a very obese patient in some uh, nerves you can actually use a linear probe for others you might actually have to use a lower frequency probe preparing the probe is equally important uh, you need to always apply a layer of gel between your uh, sheet whether you're using a tegaderm or using a sheath or using Kiln frame, whatever you use, you make sure that there is a layer, thin layer of gel uh, over the probe and make sure there's no air in it. And uh, for catheters, you need to be, use uh, everything uh, sterile. You need to use clean drape and everything. For the uh, single shot nose, you can actually use non touch technique. So you can actually have uh, gloves on and you can actually pre prepare the probe with a a sheath or a tegaderm or a cling film because you're not going to touch the needle to the probe you're going to be away from it always 
come slightly away from the probe. You don't actually have to be very close to the probe. So you can use non-touch technique. But if you're using uh, catheter techniques, uh, use uh, techniques where everything is, as, you, know, uh, you use aseptic precautions completely, uh, drapes, uh, gown, and things like that. So when you actually are actually using a particular machine and then you look, oh, which side am I coming from? So in this case, is the needle going to come from the uh, the dot side or is it going to come from the other side? That confuses the people. So, so there are two ways of doing it. Most of the time when you use probes again and again, you actually come to know which is side is which. Yeah. For example, the probe I'm holding here has got a groove. Now this groove actually corresponds to that green dot on the screen. So my needle will be coming when I'm using that and holding that and I can feel the groove with my thumb. I know that my needle is going to come from the, from the little side. Now in most cases, what I do, I tend to always make sure that my needle comes from the side of the green dot. And that is always my little side. But some people like to be uh, very anatomical and they would actually want uh, that where you're stand, standing from. So you're the left side, they would actually come uh, from uh, the uh, right side that is opposite to the uh, uh, dot. Uh, but I always actually make sure that <clears throat> my little side is always the dot. So you decide what you want to actually be, uh, how you want it. Okay. So when I actually look at my old images, it doesn't matter to me whether it's the right side or left side. I know that the lateral side, which is the lateral side, which is the medial side. It makes no difference to, to me. So the aspect marker. So in some probes, the same probe which was holding actually also has got a dot there. It's got a dot. Now, that doesn't correspond to this dot. So that is not the aspect marker. That is what is where the, the, you know, the guides for needle, which is used by gynecologist or uh, for taking biopsies, that clicks onto that. But in some uh, probes, that dot will correspond to your aspect marker. So make sure you know your probes well. The other thing is you apply a jelly and you tap on it. When you tap on the edge, you will actually see some disturbances on the screen. So you actually come to know which is the side which you're going to go to. So most people do that. They just like apply some jelly, just tap, tap, tap on the screen and look at where the disturbance have occurs on the screen. So that tells you uh, which is the aspect uh, you are looking at. Now ultrasound beam and the needle. Okay, so like I said, one part is identifying the structures, which you will learn in the, all the workshops and conferences. The other thing is be able to actually Visualize your needle throughout till you actually reach your target. Now that is the most difficult part because if you look at even the probe is actually quite thick. So you got a probe which is around uh, two centimeters or one point five centimeters thick, or even even uh, bigger like the uh, your uh, covalent probes. There they're huge, but that doesn't mean that is the size of the beam. The size of the beam is actually credit card thin. And what are you trying to do is actually align this beam, the credit card thin beam, with a needle. So that's what makes us difficult. And and slight angulation, you go slightly at angle of only one to two degrees, uh, you will suddenly see, oh yes, you're able to see, and then it disappears. The needle disappears. So aligning these two things, because you're not, once you're inside the body, you're not going to be able to actually, uh, you know, steer the uh, needle. It'll go in one direction. So only thing you can do is, is actually be able to align the probe and that requires practice. And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, later on. So align uh, the beam is important, especially if you're doing uh, what is known as inline. Okay. And uh, so the other one is, is actually going in a cross section the, uh, along this. So you look at only the, only the tip of the, of the needle or part of the needle. And that is out of plane. So in plane technique, you will be actually seeing the needle throughout. Okay, from beginning till the end, you will actually visualize the needle. Now that's a difficult bit. And that's why uh, some people, when they start off, they will start off uh, with going, uh, uh, you know, out of plane. That is a second on the right side image uh, because they find that easier. Uh, they uh, but that is not always uh, 
uh, you know, the best thing to do. It's good for probably deeper structures, uh, uh, but if you're looking at superficial structures, it's so easy to uh, practice uh, doing it inline. As I do all my all my uh, blocks uh, with inline uh, technique. And next coming is okay. Once you know your probe, uh, next is knowing your machine. Like I said, there are different machines. They are different configuration. Uh, some are a lot more complex than the others. But you don't actually have to know everything about the machine. There are only a few things. Obviously, you should know how to switch on. For example, there is the button where you actually switch on the machine. It comes on. Uh, we actually wear the <coughs> oldest Sonosite machine, uh, C180, used to actually have the button at the back, hidden in the back, so people didn't even know how to switch it on. So not surprising that when you don't know where the switch on is. Uh, so switch it on, and then you look at uh, some of this uh, uh, buttons on that and uh, knobs on that. This is the, that's what people describe as nobology. What is nobology <clears throat> is so uh, they it does have a trackpad and uh, it has got a keyboard and you can uh, you know file in things. You can put patient name, you get numbers and things like that. Uh, but basic machine we're going to talk about is the knobs required for doing a nerve block, ultrasound guided nerve blocks. And we'll go through them one by one. The first most important thing is that most machines now actually come with a preset button. So when you actually put a preset button, uh, you can actually go through a menu, which is actually shown on the right side. So there's a drop down menu. So like in this, when I actually press the button, preset button, okay, uh, this is actually not called preset on there. It's called examination. Okay, the examination, you press the examination, it shows the presets. So it says breast, small part, uh, musculoskeletal, nerve, vascular, venous. Okay. So all this uh, you can actually select. So in the, <clears throat> for doing a nerve block, you obviously will actually go for a nerve block. Uh, whereas if you're doing something like a <clears throat> tab block, then even MSK is fine. But one thing is there uh, with the, I've seen through that, that if you actually do a nerve uh, preset, uh, the machine tend to use the highest uh, definition. So you will get the best pictures, even uh, for muscles and things, you can actually get the highest uh, definition. So these are basically when you have preset, they have uh, some algorithms uh, within the machine, uh, which will make sure that certain things are a better visible. So if you're doing a nerve block, then you use a new nerve preset. So it's a very good uh, starting point. And uh, so and let's uh, look at this. Oh, okay, oh, this missed out. So this this is actually a, a nerve uh, showing showing a nerve uh, there on this thing. And I think this is looking at the at the gain. Yeah, this is this is gain. Okay. So uh, let's, uh, there's something has happened to the slides, I don't know, but the next next one is, is uh, actually the, the gain knob. Um, so once you're actually set in that, and uh, then you have a gain knob, and then you have something called an auto gain as well. Okay. So uh, when you actually have too high gain, everything looks too bright. Now you don't want uh, that uh, as well, okay. Or if you're too low, then you actually see a lot of darkness. Okay, you may actually see some structures, but this is not. So what you can actually do, you can actually have a balanced uh, gain. Either you can do it by uh, the. There are three knobs. Okay, so there is an overall gain, and there is a near gain, and there a far gain. So you can actually adjust them if you used to, or you just actually press the auto gain on, and most of the time the image is slightly dark. Then you go on to the to the overall gain and just increases slightly, and that gives you a, a good image. So you can see that. So that is the auto gain uh, button on there, and this is the overall gain, and this is the uh, far gain, and this is the near gain. Uh, it will tell you on that. So you can actually see. So when you actually look at you actually increase the uh, near gain, it will see the top of the image becomes brighter. If you increase the far gain and the image. Uh, which is actually lower down, that becomes brighter. Whereas uh, with the overall gain, everything becomes bright or increasing become brightness, reduce, it becomes dark. So when you press the auto gain, most of the time, it's, uh, like I said, gives you a, a very good image, but in my um, thing I've observed is that it's slightly darker side, 
And increasing the overall gain slightly gives you a very good image. So that's what happens with the auto gain. Okay. Right. So next uh, knob we need to know is the is the depth depth knob. And um, uh, with the depth knob, uh, you can actually select uh, the depth. Okay. Some people actually ignore this but this is actually very very important okay so if you actually have uh, it's very shallow now i'm showing the same image now uh, of the nerves okay now here what you're doing is you're actually losing and uh, you do not know what is there below okay now that's the nerve is your target but you do not know what's happening uh, below it okay so that's not good but if you actually increase the gain too much there's a lot of useless information and you can also actually see that uh, everything has actually compressed as well. So neither too shallow nor too deep, uh, and you can actually adjust it. So if this is a this is a appropriate uh, depth. You can see the artery, you can see the nerve, and you can see the structure. So if there were any small arteries, because you're going to go at near to it, you don't want anything here. So this is this is very very important. So appropriate depth, uh, you adjust it, and uh, like. Again, uh, you do this, you can do this in the uh, scouting. Before you start doing the block, you can actually adjust it. Uh, you visualize the structures, you uh, control the gain, you control the depth. Okay, you all can do it before you start doing the block. So when you increase actually the depth, uh, this is what happens. So the screen actually moves from a wider where you get a lot of information to a very narrow information. A lot of this information actually which deeper inf information is a useless information. So increasing the depth is no no good. Okay, so this is actually showing in real uh, time. Okay, so this is actually a too much of a gain, uh, too much depth, and this is this is the appropriate depth. So you get a lot of information in and around. So you'll actually see your needle coming in. You know where where the other thing structures are, and this is the this is the most appropriate thing. Now sometimes you say, why do the probes actually have this uh, ten to five megahertz? Or 8 to 13 megahertz frequency. Why this range? Why is it not just say 8 megahertz probe or 2 megahertz probe or things like that? So this is about saying that now with each probe you can actually change the frequency. You can I can choose the frequency. And this is actually done by this knob. Okay. So these knobs, if you actually see it, it actually says resolution knob. Okay, resolution. Okay. So the image here, resolution image. Is the best image. So what the pro, what the machine does, it actually uses the highest frequency. So if you're using eight to thirteen, it will use the frequency which is between ten to thirteen megahertz. Use the highest frequency. Then you actually have the uh, other other knobs. Okay, so you can have penetration, uh, or you can actually have a general knob. Okay. So this is this is a penetration uh, mode. In the penetration mode, what it does is that you are able to actually see structures uh, the deeper, which are deeper structures. They become a lot more visible. Now this is not useful in in, in such an image, but if you say, for example, if you're using uh, that five to ten megahertz, five to ten megahertz allow you to actually see up to depth of nine centimeters. So if you're using it for a deeper structure like a sciatic nerve, and the sciatic nerve is lying around, say, uh, seven or eight centimeters. Then, if you actually use the penetration more, then you will be able to see the nerve much better than if you would actually see in the general or the uh, uh, your uh, resolution more. Uh, some people like using general mode. General mode actually tend to use mid frequencies, so the penetration mode will use the lower frequencies. So, in five to ten megahertz, it will use five to seven. Uh, megahertz uh, for the penetration mode, uh, seven, seven to sort of uh, eight or six to eight megahertz for the general mode, and use use around uh, sort of eight to ten uh, for the resolution mode. So that's how the these uh, frequencies can be changed, and uh, it's useful if you're actually using it for uh, big patients. So if I actually had a had a very obese patient and I wanted to use my linear probe, I would like to use on a penetration mode when I know that the nerves will be lying much much deeper. The other important nerve on uh, the machines are color dopplers. Now we all know 
uh, that nerves and blood vessels, they all likely travel together. So when they travel together, it's always nice that if you're able to identify the blood vessels, and uh, for that, use a color Doppler. But with color Doppler, there's one thing that I did not know whether it's a vein or the artery. So veins we know compress very easily, uh, but that may not be true for uh, deeper veins. And in that case, what happens with color Doppler is that even the veins can look red or arteries can look blue depending on how the transducer is pointing out. So if you actually place the probe at an angle where the flow is towards the probe, the arteries will look red. And you change it, the same artery will likely start looking blue. So don't depend on the color of the, uh, you know, the uh, blood vessels. And we know that the flow, if you have to point the uh, probe towards the head, because that's where the probe is going to, and the flow is actually happening, especially anything below the diaphragm, then the arteries will look red. But if you actually point the probe uh, towards the foot, uh, even with femoral artery, the artery will start looking uh, looking blue. So remember Bart, okay. So this was all about machine and probes. So for machines, keep it simple. Use a preset, uh, have an optimum depth, gain and frequency and where you're not sure whether there's a blood vessel or not use a color doppler and to see the blood vessel so this was the easy part okay it's important that know your anatomy just because you're able to actually use ultrasound and see the sun anatomy does not mean that you will not pay attention to the anatomy okay go back to your first year of mbbs Knowing the landmarks is very, very important. So where you know that the uh, your femoral nerve is lying lateral to the artery. You know that uh, where the inguinal nerves come in. So you mark it and put your probe in. 99% of the time, you will likely see the structure there. It's as simple as that. All you need to do then is, is simple you know, maneuvers, which I will talk about. Uh, and you will likely see the structure. So it's very, very easy. Where If you can mark the structure, put your probe there, center of the probe there, and you will likely get the structure. So what do you do if you can't actually see anything? So there are two things we're talking about now. Uh, one thing is, is visualizing the nerve. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And that's why I say that is actually taught in the courses, in the workshops. The second thing is, is visualizing the needle. What maneuvers can we do to visualize the needle from the beginning to end. So when you actually look at, uh, we all talk about something called parts. This is, the books will say part, but we actually have the uh, fifth one as well called slide, so it becomes part. So you use pressure, alignment, rotation, tilt, and slide. So what is this pressure, alignment, rotation, tilt, and slide? So you got a nerve, right? And you use a linear probe. And the nerve is lying deep, so if you can actually see the, the arrows, this one and this are the same. And now you see that obviously the screen size is actually smaller than the depth of the nerve. How are you going to see it? You can. Apply a pressure, okay? And you actually can reduce, and suddenly the nerve will become visible. Okay, so pressure is important. And, and I've seen people, because a lot of people actually are trained to do uh, your central lines using ultrasound now in there you actually are use you know trying to get into a vein which is easily collapsible so you use it very gentle you apply very gentle pressure you know you apply a little bit of pressure the vein disappears again so people likely tend to use the same technique to the nerves no with the nerves you can be a little bit brutal okay so you can apply pressure you can apply pressure uh, which is obviously an awake patient the patient should be comfortable they should not Feel the pain. Uh, that's not an issue in uh, in patients who are asleep. So applying pressure brings the structure more superficially, and you can actually see the nerve. It will suddenly become visible to you. So everything is being compressed so that the beams hit the nerve and come back. So that's pressure. Next is alignment by rotation, tilt, and slide. Okay. So if you Put the probe in a, in a wrong direction, you're not going to see it. 
So if you're looking, trying to see a, a longitudinal view, okay, along the thing, you will have to have to rotate it along the nerve so that the nerve is actually almost the beam is like a line and cutting through the nerve. Or if you look at cross-sectional, it need to be at 90 degrees to that. So rotation, you rotate it slightly. Obviously, it has it's most of the time it's not going to be a huge amount of rotation. The other is is tilt, tilt, tilt. And now there's something called anisotropy. People say, oh, we have went to a course and they were showing me this femoral nerve and uh, or the sciatic nerve in popliteal fossa, and it was so beautifully seen. I've got a thin patient, but I still can't be able to see. That's because the nerve has something called anisotropy. That means the nerve, the beam actually have to hit the nerve almost at 90 degrees, like, and the beams come back, and then only you actually form the image. You actually tilt it slightly, they reflect the beams of the of the probe. You won't actually they go beyond the probe, and you don't see it. So giving a slight gentle tilt. So you know your landmark, you have put the probe, you know, you go, can see the femoral artery and later to it, you should actually see the nerve. You're not able to see the nerve. What you do it, just give us a slight gentle tilt. And suddenly uh, what was not visible will become visible. So this is an isotropy tendons, the, and the nerves actually have this anisotropy. So tilt is actually very, very important. The other thing is, is a slide. Okay, slide is actually more important when you're looking at longitudinal views of the nerves or you're looking at uh, the needle. Okay, so you need to slide it. Okay, tilt is more for looking at cross sectional view of the nerves and uh, you know getting a cross sectional view. So I'm going to now explain them in, in terms of a few, uh, you know, schematic diagrams. So now we got a got a nerve, right? Okay, you got a probe, and what's happening in this uh, is that the beams are actually not coming; they're going beyond the probe. Like okay, they're not like, able to do it. So this is because the beam is actually not touching the nerve; they're not hitting the nerve. So what it does, you give a little tilt, and the beams actually start collecting. So that is what is an isotropic. Okay. So beams may be coming in and, and just bouncing off the structure, and that's why you don't see that. So give it a little tilt, and you will be able to uh, see the structure. So that is uh, anisotropy. So giving a tilt. Next thing is slide. Like I said, slide is mainly uh, for, so you actually introduce a needle. And that is a credit card size beam, and those are not matching. They're not in parallel with each other. So unless you actually now slide uh, the whole probe, uh, you know, up and down, and uh, you will not see see the needle. So uh, suddenly, uh, when it comes into the view, you will actually see the needle. So this slide, you know, the sliding it by slightly just a millimeter here and there actually makes a lot of difference. Tilt is not. We're not talking when tilt of thirty degrees, forty degrees. This is like two degrees, three degrees tilt. Uh, so we actually have to have a very controlled, uh, you know, movements. And uh, something which I haven't actually uh, stressed upon is that when you actually hold the probe, also probe need to be resting on the body. Your hand should be resting so it's holding so that it's not in the air. Because when you actually have the hand in the air, it will move. The probe will move. You will translate all the movement uh, to the probe. So you need to actually have your hand resting on the body so you're able to actually control the movement. So here and then, then now you are able to actually visualize the nerve. You actually saw the nerve. You did that. Now you want to actually now do the nerve block. So you want to actually introduce the needle. So you actually apply pressure. So here the nerve, see the nerve is actually pretty deep. That's the uh, depth. That's the depth. That's the depth on seat. So you apply pressure, and uh, yeah, you apply pressure. You're able to actually see the nerve a little bit. Okay and uh, that's good but it's not the best view so what do you do next next thing is you actually tilt the probe so you tilt it a little bit and you actually get in line uh, with the probe the, the nerve is actually now the anastrop is gone you're able to actually uh, collect the beam and you get a very beautiful picture of the nerve so you did that fantastic and next you actually uh, now need to keep the image in the view and now you actually have to get the needle and and uh, 
you have to see the whole needle progressing. So from uh, the uh, entry point till it reaches the nerve. And this is where the most problem occurs. And this is where you need lots of practice. And it will be frustrating sometimes. Uh, it's easier to do with uh, superficial structures. We can actually see the needle very well. But once you start actually getting to a deeper nerves, there when when the uh, your frustration will happen. So this could actually happen. So always you need to have imagination. So if your probe is actually direct and your uh, needle is coming from the side, what will happen? You will see part of the needle, and it's not aligned properly. So you might actually go deeper. You think, oh, yes, I can see the needle, but it could have gone beyond into the blood vessel, and there you see blood coming into the uh, your extension tubing. Okay. So this is not the not the right thing. Okay. You need to align. Do not uh, inject anything uh, till you are able to actually see the whole needle. That's not the tip. The tip is actually somewhere else. Okay. It's, it's in the... Uh, so you not align it properly. So align it. Uh, make it align. Uh, use uh, rotation, okay? Use uh, your tilt and use your slide. Use all this so to align the needle uh, with the credit card size beam, okay? So alignment by rotation, tilt and slide goes hand in hand and, and you then start moving your needle slowly until you see. So you again, it will disappear at times again. And then again, you might actually have to do the same maneuvers again till you are actually in the right position. And then once you're in a perfect harmony, then you actually inject your local anesthetic. And that's when you get the best effect. You actually see, you might sometimes actually have to go around. Uh, sometimes you're lucky, you actually get with a single point, you can actually get local anesthetic all around. So so it uh, depends um, on that. Sometimes you go have to go up below, right, left, other places, okay. So like I said, after you have identified the nerve, uh, the most difficult part is learning hand-eye coordination. And uh, this comes from practice. Uh, for deeper structures, you might actually also uh, get better needles. We have high visibility needles, uh, like sonoplex needles. And you can actually see that there are serrations on the tip of the needle. And this helpfully helps because in normal uh, needle, if the if your needle is at least more than 60 degrees to the foot pad, that is the plate of the uh, probe, the beams will actually hit and, and, and they will be dispersed everywhere. You will not be able to f uh, form an image because to form an image, uh, the beams actually have to hit the needle or the structure and come back uh, to the probe because the probe not only acts like a transmitter, it is also the receiver. So unless that happens, it will not form an image. But uh, with needles which have got serrations, what you can uh, do is you can actually collect the beam all, even if it is hitting at a different angle. So you can actually see them uh, much better. So high visibility needle is there. And uh, this becomes important when you're going for a deeper structure. For superficial structures, this is not necessary. And uh, uh, for uh, learning uh, good hand-eye coordination, uh, one thing which I have stressed before, you need to actually have everything in line of vision. Make sure ergonomics is maintained. You can do practice. You have got phantoms. Uh, uh, blue phantoms are available. Or you can actually use turkey leg uh, if you're a non-vegetarian. If you're vegetarian, don't use paneer. Paneer doesn't work well. Uh, what works well is tofu. Tofu has got higher water content. Uh, you can actually use that. And if you want to actually create nerves, you can actually thread, you know, take a thread, thick thread or a wire and uh, put it through the tofu or through the uh, chicken leg or turkey leg. And you can actually create a structures which you can actually see and practice your needling. So needling, uh, you have to have. Obviously, I mean, nothing like uh, doing blocks under guidance of someone. Who's, who can actually help you to actually see things better and, and guide you. Uh, but if you actually are not able to do and you have got time on your hand, you can use phantoms for learning hand-eye coordination. One of the things which actually is mentioned and which is actually can be done not for everything, but in obese patients, this actually is important. 
uh, this is called healing maneuver so what do you do is you heal in so this is actually showing two images and uh, in one image on the left side uh, i will actually show in the next one you look at the angle of the uh, needle you can actually see the trajectory now the trajectory of the needle uh, to the probe is at an, at, is, is there is a, a great angle it's not parallel but in the second one it seems to be much more parallel so what will happen is in this case then in the first image the you may not actually see the needle but suddenly in the second it becomes visible okay this is what is called healing in you digging the heel in so that's what is called healing so this part is actually maintained whereas the other part is actually dug in and i'll show you in a schematic diagram we will understand it better so this is what is happening in the initial image this is what happening the probe is actually hitting the uh, the beams are hitting and they are actually dispersing so you don't get an image but keeping that side in and digging the this side in okay that is this is called healing so you dug in and what has happened is now the beams are actually parallel now the beams are able to hit the nerve and come back and your you become a gatherer you are able to gather uh, the beams uh, from uh, you know which are hitting the structure and coming back and then everything become visible so this is what is called a healing maneuver okay then coming to now now ultrasound guided region anesthesia is a dynamic process okay uh, one thing you need to do you need to move one thing at a time okay so do not inject local anesthetic you, until you are able to see the tip of the needle that is very obvious okay and always aspirate before you inject okay sometimes there might be needle tip might be you think the needle tip is actually near the structure it might be deeper so always inject only after you have aspirated the other thing is like i said move one thing at a time now for deeper structures you struggle very hard you did all the maneuvers you did the pressure you put in uh, tilt and things you got them and now when in and it's now visible beautifully visible and then you actually start putting a needle and that doesn't go okay so what do you do in this case do you actually manipulate the probe or do you manipulate the needle right now if you are saying that even with slightest of the movement the probe is actually moving uh, sorry the structures are disappearing then you actually make sure the probe is actually in the same position and then you manipulate the needle so you come out visualize how the beam would be going okay in and you actually have, will have to actually take out the needle and actually manipulate the needle but if the structure is a superficial in that case you can actually manipulate the probe and slight manipulation of the needle so for deeper structure it is better to actually just keep the probe still and manipulate your needle whereas for the superficial structures you can actually manipulate uh, both uh, either way i mean uh, it doesn't matter because they will be the structure will be a lot more easily visible so it's easier to do that so coming to the conclusion and i will actually show you a video as well in the end there are three main steps in optimizing imaging. So this is talking about images. How do you image them? One thing is that on the machine, you use the appropriate preset, that is a nerve preset. Second thing, make sure you actually have appropriate depth and appropriate gain, right? So that is happens with the, your imaging, okay. Next thing is optimizing the neural tip visualization and hand-eye coordination. For this, one thing, you use parts so use pressure use alignment using rotation tilt and slide okay for certain structures uh, you can actually use healing maneuver okay that makes it vision needle visualization easy but like i said it will be difficult for some places you can't actually use healing maneuver in for example in supraclavicular area okay but for say tap block or rectation block you can use healing maneuver Third thing is move one thing at a time, okay? Don't be in a rush, okay? If you're seeing you have a nerve which is actually deep, make sure you get a good image, keep the probe like that, and you manipulate the needle. Even if it means you have to do multiple punctures coming in and out, changing things, do it, okay? 
But for superficial, you can actually just keep the noodle in and you can manipulate it first. So move one thing at a time. Okay. Now this is this is a video of uh, one of my trainee is actually doing uh, a uh, femoral nerve block. Okay. Just see him. He's spending his time and he's move, making very slight movements. So he has marked it. Okay. And uh, he knows where the nerve. So he knows the anatomy. He places the probe. Uh, which is absolutely exactly on the on thing and then he starts like so you can look at his hand how he has stabilized the probe that's very very important okay stabilizing the probe is very very important so that he can actually do a slight movement so you will not even notice that he's actually tilted the probe or slide slide the probe it is such fine movements which comes from observing okay and then he is actually looking at it see everything is in the line of vision the machine is actually opposite to him. He's standing there. Everything. This is this is the best ergonomic. He's not bending over. He has got a table at the right uh, uh, direction. Uh, sorry, at the uh, right height. Everything is in one line. Okay, so this is the best. And uh, other thing which is I actually always teach is that we do not actually inject. You can see he's trying to inject, doing a hydro dissection. So that's another way of looking at where. So if you're not sure, just put a little bit of. Uh, you can use uh, water uh, if you are uh, using nerve stimulation. But if you're not using nerve stimulation, you can just use saline. Okay. So you can see hydro dissection. On the image, you can actually see that's a femoral nerve. He's actually injected local above the nerve. Right. And in this case, when you, some people will be happy with it, uh, but uh, we are uh, very uh, perfectionist. So we tend to actually uh, want to know all around. We like to have a donut and uh, like my friend uh, murti guru not murti actually says he likes the uh, vada and uh, sambar <laughs> uh, vada floating in sambar so uh, he's a south indian likes uh, idli dosas and vadas <laughs> so he likes to actually have have like a like a vada floating in the sambar uh, so we actually do that so he's gone gone back in now the image is obviously i did actually uh, had posted a video of this blog uh, separately, uh, not attached to. It's already been around 40, 45 minutes uh, since you're listening to me. Uh, but in the end, uh, what I want to say is that, that absolutely they get a good image. The the things to see here is that ergonomics is maintained, and uh, you can actually now actually see uh, local anesthetic floating around in the. Uh, yeah. So that that was a that was a, a a very nice video. We can actually see that. We have actually marked uh, among the uh, you know uh, anterior spine, iliac crest, so, and the and the you can mark the femoral artery as well. So landmarks are very very important. It does not matter whether you're doing uh, laceration blocks or PNS blocks or ultrasonic block. Knowing your anatomy is very very important here. Uh, so that's I think been a long lecture, almost uh, 40 50 minutes. And uh, thank you for watching and. Uh, you can post the questions. I would actually prefer that you post the question at the end after watching the whole video. Because what happens is if you actually start posting the question in the middle of the video, I may actually miss out. So any questions we can either actually have, I will actually can post, uh, I'll actually create another post for questions uh, so that everybody can actually uh, watch uh, this later on. Okay, and uh, good night, everybody.